Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a wildlife artist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'd like to concentrate on erasers. And there's a massive range of erasers out there from pens, pen type erasers with a vinyl eraser inside to your standard vinyl or rubber. And then we've got things like blue tack, kneaded erasers, pencil erasers. There really is a massive, massive range out there. And some of them can be quite expensive as well. So it's worth knowing what actually works and what doesn't. Because believe me, I've tested them out and there's a massive difference between things such as the pen type erasers and the pencils and the kneaded erasers. And they all do different things. For the kneaded erasers, they may not erase as well as a pencil eraser or a vinyl eraser. But then sometimes you only want to kind of lighten an area that's in shadow on charcoal or, or things like that. So they, they've all got their own uses. But if you're buying things like pen erasers, <coughs> excuse me, which ones are the best? If you want to specifically get back down to the white paper as much as possible, which ones actually do the best job? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. So without any further ado, let's check them out and see how good they really are. Okay, so here's my set of erasers, all lined up nice and neatly, and I've done a bit of a chart behind. And what I've done to start with, I put a strip of graphite down there. Normal graphite, B pencil, and I've, I've used Derwent, but anything, anything's good enough. What I've then done is put the names of each individual pen over the top, so we can see how they perform. After I've done the graphite, I'm going to do charcoal, probably going to do a coloured pencil as well just to see how, they, how it erases different media. And I won't bore you with those last two, I'll just show you the results. So these are the ones I've got to start with. Now, these eraser pens, here's a popular one, Tough Stuff is called. They come with refills as well, which you buy separately. Some of them can work out quite expensive. And they all seem to do the same type of thing. You just push the top, it dispenses the vinyl eraser. Now, to keep the eraser clean, you can just use a Stanley knife or blade like that. Just chop the top off and then you've got a clean eraser ready for next time. And they are advertised as being specifically for detailed work. So that's how you get them back in. So I've got a Tough Stuff eraser. That's Papermate. And then these are also very popular. Mono Zero, Tombow. Now, these are really, really small. So that's the circular version. Not too expensive. You may have to import it if you're in the UK. And that's more of a, an oblong version then, which is also really useful. The vinyl in them is, is tough, really tough. It's surprising. It's quite hard, so it holds its shape. It doesn't wear away too quickly. The tough stuff. That's a little bit more flexible. A little bit. So then... I've, I've got a cheap one. This is just one that I found in a, in a local cheap type of shop. Looks the same. Vinyl eraser is soft. And I got that just to see if there's any point in buying these expense, more expensive ones. Then I'm having a little look at some pencils. So I've got Faber-Castell. And I've also got Derwent. So two really popular makes. One's got a pink rubber in it, the other's got a white. Then these are your classic erasers. So there's Derwent version, only very cheap. And then this really is a, a, a super cheap one. That's probably just a, a few pence in a, in a local cheap shop. Is at any point buying the slightly dearer ones? We're gonna find out. Now, very popular is kneaded erasers. Now this is one Creta color. So that's your more expensive one. You can feel it's quite sticky. And the way you use these, you actually usually would break a little bit off. Massage or knead it into the shape, hence the kneaded eraser, and then you can use it to dap onto the surface. So that's an already formed eraser. You can also buy blue tack, which is used for putting things like posters on walls, blue tack, and also more recently they've come up with white tack. Same thing, allegedly, one's blue, one's white. So I've got those there to try as well. So, let's move all these to the side, and then in turn, what I intend on doing, 
is trying them out and to see how much of this graphite I can actually get back to the white paper. It's a really excellent quality paper I'm using. It's very thick, it's Melatex, and it shouldn't it, it should give the erasers their best chance of getting back down to the white paper without ruining or tearing and things like that. Because sometimes papers tear and the cheaper usually the cheaper types are the ones that's going to do it more often. So let's take a little look. So let's go in order. So this is Tough Stuff Japan. I'm just going to put a little bit out and just on the corner, back and forth, wriggle it down. Let's go over it twice. So that's really good. That, that's really brought that up. So if I just do a single line, you can see how with these erasers, they're also not just brilliant for taking it back to the white paper, but you can do things and actually draw with them. So if you've got a dark area like that, you can draw here, the highlights and, and that type of thing with it. So that's tough stuff. So that performed quite well. Mono zero. Just get a little bit out. If you get too much out, it's going to start to bend. So but you want enough so you're away from that metal work. So same again. Nice to hold. Looks like it's and feels like it's made very well. So that's taking it right down as well. Just taking the end of the shavings off. And you can see that that is another good tool that could be used for actually drawing as well. Mono zero. So just a little bit of the end out. So this should, with the shape of that, that should really be ideally suited to drawing a line. And it is. You can see a little bit of the graphite there. So that's really come out quite detailed. So you'd, you would be limited really with this one to actually doing things like straight lines. Um, because of the shape, I suppose you could do a wider area as well. So that really does bring it back to the, the whiteness of the paper. Try a little bit more there too. I've only recently discovered these, these ones, these three actually. Because I've never had much luck with these pen types, probably because I've only used the cheaper ones, because I'm a little bit tight with my money. So that's the three. Not a lot of difference between them. Difference in size, that's what I liked about those. Okay, so is there any point spending that extra money on those? Use a cheapy version. Is he any good? Let's give him his best shot. So all of a sudden, you can see, even if I put him in a little bit further, if I put him in too far, I can't get a mark, but if I get them out slightly more, I've lost complete control over it, even though it's taken it down pretty good to the white paper. And I've got no control of doing that line, and it's just wobbling all over the place. So it does go down to the white paper, but the problem is with that is that you lose complete control over it because it's just too soft. It's a shame. If the end was so was harder, it would be a really good pencil, a pen. Okay, these are going to be interesting. Faber-Castell pencil eraser. So we've got a pink end, which I was worried about straight away. I was worried about that actually leaving a pink residue on the paper or pink mark. This is called the Perfection 7056. And it's advertised as says on the packaging, especially suited to fine detail. And that rubber, that eraser on the end is actually quite hard as well. So let's give this a go. So I've sharpened it to a nice point. And straight away, it's not going as white as these pen ones. It is lifting it. It says it's for ideal, ideally suited for um, fine details but you can't really get any finer than that i got a sharp point on it and that's the width the best width i'm going to get out of it so it's nowhere near as fine as these if i just draw it down once or twice you can see not a lot comes off so it's got its uses i suppose if you're pushing hard on it like that going over and over it comes down ish to the white paper not as great as these two in my opinion um, 
as God as you says, I suppose. Just gonna do that one a little bit more because it's not really representing what I've what it can do there. Okay, so that's the Faber Cassell. So can the Derwent do any better? So we've got the white tip on the Derwent. So that's more of your classic eraser. What is handy is a very soft brush on the back end because you don't really want to be blowing the surface of your paper when you've got the the shavings and eraser bits and things like that on there. So that's really handy having the brush on there. Not particularly expensive, but not cheap either. So let's see what happens with this soft, soft end. So it is erasing whiter, but as you can see by the end of it, it's gone grey. But the problem is, well, a bit of a problem. That's kind of as fine a line as I can get out of it. So it's nice and white. It really has erased a lot. If I just draw it down once or twice, a little bit's coming off. It is a very effective for larger areas. So I would, wouldn't really call this precise area control at all and it's not going to last very long either but it would have its uses i like the brush on the end too it's better in my opinion with graphite than the faber castell pencil you can see it's gone much better down to the white paper probably even so than the pens but that's not really fine detail in my box that would be okay under the classic rubbers, this is what we all used in school, these type of things. Vinyl, I think they're made out of rather than rubber. This is a Derwent one, so it's a more expensive one. S still only cheap, but a little bit more expensive than the budget types. Problem is with these, can't see where you're erasing. Once the eraser is down, and like with the pens, I can't see underneath it. But that is excellent. Right down to the white paper. Nice sharp edge on it. And with these you can trim them with a, a razor blade just trim the end off to keep them going let's try them just once or twice by there well it's going to be just once and the reason being if i tried to go over that twice i can't really see other than getting my head right down and really trying to look detailed with it and will it come down to the white paper superb best of the lot so for erasing larger areas making straight lines i can, You'd struggle to do. What you really want is this in those pens. So there's obviously some slight difference between this type of eraser and the ones or the vinyl that's in those pens. So that that's really effective. Do it. Okay. Let's pop that there so we can see it. Then we go on to the cheaper versions. So this is is your classic one you'd see kids in kids' bulk, um, boxes and packaging in school and pencil cases. He's one of your cheap ones. This was, I think this was 20 pence. So is it as good as the Derwent? Feels, feels a bit different. Takes it right down to the white paper. Not quite as good there, but. So the problem that's happening with this is that the residue for this, for some reason is staying on there and it's affecting the paper let's have another go it's got a clean edge there so that's not too great let's try the same thing with the derwent again brush them off let's have a good look see what's going on here okay you get what you pay for by the seam of it to within the reason so this cheap one, it has taken any off and when you're using kind of like a stroke like that and it stays on there, but the problem is it's staying on there and then it's rubbing back on the paper. The Derwent looks like it's staying on there, but it's, even though I keep going, it's adhering back to the rubber, back to the vinyl. So big difference there. Okay, next stage are these more pliable erasers. This one's the blue tack. So what you do, you take it out the packet. It'd probably be quite hard, especially if it's cold. Start to work it in your fingers a little bit before you start drawing. And then it becomes more pliable as it gets a bit warmer, softer. Now, these are not really meant to go back to the white paper as such. They're, they're a very different type of eraser. But I formed an edge to it. Oh, and look at that. You see, 
Oh, it's really gone on there. But the good thing about these is that even though the blue tack looks dirty, it's not coming back onto the paper. It's sticking to it. And to get a clean section, all you do is fold it in and it lasts ages. So let's create a sharp edge there. You can create any shape you want with these. Problem is they are a bit soft. Can't get a perfectly fine line with that, like that. But like I said, they're not really meant for that. Where they're good is if you want to do effects, just take a little bit out deliberately, perhaps in a background in a shadow area. Let's see if you can, with a bit of work, get to the white paper. Oh, look at that. Not particularly clean around the edges, because it is pliable, of course, but that's excellent. That's up there with the whitest of the lot of them. So that's blue tack, that's really useful. Now there's a white version, white tack. Interesting name, I bet we took him ages to think that one up. So same thing, make it playable, takes a little bit of work. And then it's ready. Let's get a sharpish edge on there again. Should work the same really. I'm pretty sure the blue is probably just a dye in it. There you go, actually it looks a bit better, doesn't it? Could be the shape I'm doing slightly different, maybe holding its shape a bit better. Oh, that's really good. Once again, you can do those softer effects. I'm great for cleaning large areas. Okay, so they, they're really cheap now. Blue tack and white tack, tack is, is really cheap. In the UK, I think we pay about a pound or less a pack on those in some of the cheaper shops. So a kneaded eraser, very, very similar. Let's break a bit off. So it's a bit easier to handle. Knead it up. Softer, much softer than this blue tack in feel. Much softer. And the warmer it's getting, the softer it's getting. Does that mean I can't get a, an edge to it that'll hold? So I created a similar edge. Pretty light touch. And that's good too. It's soft, it's, it is very soft though. Very soft. Almost like a soft clay. So we can do those same effects. Can it get us back close to white paper? Yep, it's really good. The problem I'm getting is, is it is so soft that under my fingers, as soon as I'm pushing to the paper, it's changing shape. So it's good for rubbing up large areas, same as the blue tacks and the white tack would be. I'm not so sure I'm that keen on it being that pliable. Okay, so what have we found? Cheap eraser, rubbish. Wouldn't use that, it's going to ruin my drawing. Don't even know if I could save it. I could possibly save it by going over with an expensive or more expensive one. Blue tack is good. I like it. Lots of artists like it. Lots of really professional artists like it. No difference really than white tack. I think I'd rather the white tack personally. Kneaded eraser is okay, a bit too flexible. I wouldn't bother using that, I'd rather go with the blue tack and the white tack. So I like them. Derwent pencil. I don't know. I wanted to like it. I did. I like Derwent, I like their pencils, I like their charcoals and all different things. Good company. Disappointed me a little bit. I suppose it's got its uses, but as it got any use over blue tack and these pens. For me, probably not because the eraser bit's a bit too soft. Faber-Castell for the graphite portion. I don't like it. I don't like the fact it's pink. Not that I got anything about against it, but I'm, even though it doesn't seem to mark the paper pink, I'm a bit concerned that it would. It doesn't go back to the white without a lot of work. That could ruin soft papers. No benefit for me over the Derwent. Don't see the point. Cheap pen. Looks good. Looks like it's going to work just like one of these. 
it doesn't. If you put out slightly too much, it's going to flop all over the place. I don't know. I don't, that's not going in my art kit. Don't like it. Okay. So, mono zero, the square one. Now, it's got its uses, hasn't it? It produces the finest line of the lot. You can use the back end to make squiggly lines. I like it a lot. I, you know, especially for drawing with it. I wouldn't use this to erase large areas. What's the point when I got better ones that'll do it over there? But that produces perfectly straight lines and wavy lines too. Mono zero, the, the rounder end, I really like. I can see the, how this is going to get details out, like highlights in eyes. It goes back pretty much to the white paper. I wouldn't bother erasing a larger area, area than that with this, because that's not what it's meant for. Really good find. Only recently got introduced to that, so that's good. Tough stuff. It's a tougher eraser. It really is. You'd have to be careful if you're using a finer paper because you wouldn't want it to dig down into the paper. Perhaps it won't, but I like it. It does larger areas. So I like detail work. I like those three pens on graphite. I like the Derwent eraser and eraser block and the blue tack. So, so far, we've got our best, our top. If we class those two together, one, two, three, four, five, we've got our top six so far. But let's, I'm going to try them all now on the charcoal. They may work completely different. We may find that the ones that didn't work on the graphite are going to be superb on the charcoal. That's going to confuse things in the art box. Then I'm going to try it on coloured pencil. That's going to be the tough one for all of them because coloured pencil is not so easy to come up. I'm not expecting any of them to get down to the white paper, but it's going to be interesting to see which ones or which one performs best. So let's take a look at the next section. Okay, so I've given all those a, a, a test. Um, one thing becomes apparent straight away, and that is that charcoal doesn't necessarily want to be removed all the way back down to the white, white paper. None of them could actually do that. So if you're using charcoal, the take-home message is, Getting back to the white paper is going to be very difficult, so you don't want to put an extreme dark on an area you want to get back white. But some of them have worked better than others. So let's take another close look and go through the list and see what we've got. Okay, so the Tough Stuff pen worked good again. In fact, the Tough Stuff, the Mono Zero, and even the Cheap Pen, although the Cheap Pen was harder to control, all produced relatively the same results. They've got back pretty much to the white paper. They haven't done too bad at all. They're good, so you can still draw hairs and highlights in there, but it's not going to get back to the white like graphite. But then you're starting with a lighter area. <clears throat> Faber-Castell pencil, that didn't do too bad. It's not a detailed pencil, as I said. I don't know why they call it that. It doesn't go anywhere near as detailed as the pens, because the tip is not holding the shape. The Derwent pencil, didn't want to know. Too soft, wouldn't lift the the colour off at all. The eraser, that's your standard Derwent eraser, that worked great. That was okay, that's in line to what the pens have taken. We've got some straight lines there as well. The cheap one didn't perform as well this time again, so that's still out of my arsenal. Blue tack, white tack, they performed equally as I'd expect. They're pretty good. They get some of the colour off. As I said before, they're probably more beneficial for effects like backgrounds lifting some area off and also you can shape it. Kneaded eraser that was just too soft and it really didn't want to know with this um, charcoal. So completely the, the results are very similar to as they were with the graphite but let's take a look with colored pencil and see what it can do and the pencil I'm using is a um, cobalt blue greenish 9201144 and that's polychromos germany so that's a really top quality pencil i'm going to use just one color i'm going to put it onto the paper push it right into the surface and see how they perform with that one okay so i've taken a look at the erasers and seen how they performed against the um, colored pencil and i thought charcoal was difficult to erase Colour pencil is 10 times more difficult to erase for sure. So it's really a case of 
when you're using colored pencils reserving those white areas um, I'm not an expert with colored pencils so no doubt somebody has found a way possibly of um, getting back closer to the white paper but as far as the erasers go nothing's really performed very well at all um, we just go through it very briefly to show you the details so here's the pens you're not going to be erasing out any fine detail with those that's for sure in fact the only things that really stood out were the softer ones the Derwent pencil the needed erasers the blue tacks white tacks they didn't want to know at all in lifting the standard erasers pretty much got you to the white paper as close as you're going to get but you're obviously always going to get a real stain and I haven't blended this blue in there at all I've just gone over it with a pencil um, so it's had its best chance of getting back to the white paper but as I said your, your best choice with colored pencils is going to be to reserve that white which it would be with charcoal as well and really graphite you know but um, the erasers are there to get you back to the white paper or create an effect with the graphite you've certainly got more of a chance of getting back to the white if you want something pure white you want to reserve the white area and then use the pencils to clean up the pens i found really really useful i'm glad i found those especially the mono zero pens they're going to ch change the way i draw um, a lot i'm also going to use them for charcoal as well so they're a really good find and the standard eraser is really good too as well as the blue tack so my recommendation or what i'm going to keep in my my art box i'm going to thin it all down i'm going to weed out these ones that i think are really rubbish like the cheap pens the cheap erasers i'm not going to use a kneaded eraser i'm going to stick with the blue and white tack the tough stuff pen the mono zeros and I think they're going to give me the, the best chance of getting the effects that I want. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's managed to clear up some of the confusion with erasers. There's electric ones and battery operated ones as well. I haven't included them in this. I'm going to do a separate video. So hope you've enjoyed it and see you all again real soon. Hope you've enjoyed this short video. If so, you may like to go over to my website, jasonmorgan.co.uk. There I've got lots of full length feature videos on techniques and tips. I've got ebooks, I've got 800 reference photos, all with the new Easy Trace line art, and so much more. So that's jasonmorgan.co.uk. Also on YouTube, every Friday, I've got Free Photo Friday. Every Thursday, I'm doing art book reviews. And every Tuesday, it's tips and also art product reviews. So don't forget to come back soon.